Hey, Stargazers, welcome back to another episode of Skywatch Wednesday. My name is Nick. I'm a theater's manager at the Adler Planetarium in Chicago, Illinois. In this episode, we'll be talking all about the winter sky, the stars, planets, and constellations you can see as you head outside and look up this winter. The centerpiece of the winter sky is undoubtedly the constellation of Orion the Hunter. At the start of the winter, Orion is rising in the east as the sky darkens. He'll be up all night, is easy to recognize, and bright enough to be seen even from very light polluted skies. From darker skies, you'll see the full extent of stars in this constellation, a very rich part of the sky. And you might even have trouble picking out the brightest stars with all the dimmer ones crowding the view. The most recognizable part of Orion is his belt of three stars. This pattern in the sky is eye-catching from any sky. Diagonal across it are two supergiant stars, Betelgeuse and Rigel. Betelgeuse, one of Orion's shoulders, is a red supergiant star, shining with a reddish-orange color. Rigel, one of the knees, is a blue supergiant, very hot, and it's got a distinctive blue tint. Just below the belt is another small group of three stars, known as the Sword of Orion. The middle star of the sword looks a little fuzzy, and in fact, it's the Great Orion Nebula, a beautiful star-forming region. With binoculars or a telescope, you can begin to see a lot more detail in this region. And with long exposure astrophotography, the incredible extent of dust and gas in this stellar nursery becomes apparent. Well, Orion is just the most recognizable of the wintertime constellations, and many of the others are arranged in a pattern in the sky that's very easy to spot. There are some very bright stars in a circular shape in this part of the sky, and Orion is located in the lower portion of what's called the Winter Circle. The star Rigel marks one of the bright stars that make up this shape. This is a huge pattern that dominates the evening sky this time of year, and it's very bright. If we go up from Orion, we find this bright reddish-orange star called Aldebaran. It's part of this V-shape of stars in the sky, the face of Taurus, the bull. The bright star Aldebaran marks the eye of Taurus, and you can extend the V-shape farther out to form the horns of the bull. Included in this constellation is a beautiful cluster of stars known as the Pleiades, or the Seven Sisters. This cluster contains over a thousand stars, but with the naked eye, there are usually six or seven to be seen, and occasionally more with very dark skies and sharp eyesight. Binoculars give a terrific view, and telescopes can begin to pick up some of the nebulosity here, dust and gas through which these stars are passing. The dust and the gas is illuminated by the light from these stars, giving the whole scene a bluish, wintry tinge. Further along the circle from Aldebaran is the bright star Capella, which marks Orija, the charioteer. Even in light-polluted skies, Capella shines through, and you should have no issue spotting it, as it goes almost directly overhead from mid-northern latitudes later in the night in early winter. As far as seeing anything else in this constellation, the five bright stars form a sort of oblong pentagon. And there's a small triangle of stars near Capella that's called the Kids, meant to represent the goat kids that a ride to the charioteer is holding. Continuing along the circle, we come to a well-known zodiac constellation, the Gemini Twins marked by two twin stars, Pollux and Castor. The rest of the constellation resembles two stick figures side by side in the sky. And further along the winter circle, we reach the final two stars, Procyon and Sirius. These two are part of the two celestial dogs, Canis Major and Canis Minor. Sirius, sometimes called the dog star, is the brightest star in the nighttime sky. And in addition to the winter circle, you can also spot another shape in the sky here, the Winter Triangle, made up of the stars Procyon, Sirius, and Betelgeuse, one of the shoulders of Orion. So these constellations are very consistent from one winter to the next. But in the case of planets, they can be very inconsistent, changing their position in the sky from one season to the next, and definitely from one year to the next. This winter, though, you have a great chance to catch two very bright planets in the evening sky, Jupiter and Saturn. Saturn is on its way out of the sky for the season, so you want to catch it in the southwest after sunset. It's in a fairly drab part of the sky, so you should have no issue picking it out. It's fairly far from Earth right now, but through a backyard telescope, you should still be able to glimpse a view of the rings. Jupiter is much closer to Earth and also much higher in the southern sky in the evening, so your chances are much better to grab a crisp view of it with a backyard scope. 
The cloud bands and the great red spot are certainly fair game with even a modest scope. And you might spot the four Galilean moons of Jupiter with just steadily held binoculars. Our moon is on the move as well, with a full cold moon on December 26th and the full wolf moon coming up on January 25th. The full moon is a great phase for a big, bright appearance in the sky, but if you're looking to spot interesting features with a telescope, the 10 days or so leading up to a full moon offer a great chance to see the lunar surface in better lighting, with craters and mountains cast in sharp relief along the shadow line or terminator. The winter sky has many treasures to offer, so it's worth a little chill to step outside this time of the year and look up at all that the night sky has to offer. That's all we've got for you this episode. Thanks, as always, for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to Adler's YouTube channel and also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Happy stargazing. We'll see you next time.